Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Kat. You can find me on Instagram, eBay, and YouTube under Mid-Century Kat. It's very nice to have you with me today. If you like the content that you're about to hear, please like and subscribe. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about buttons, old buttons. I had a colleague gave me two coffee cans of old buttons, and we're going to talk about some of them. I have not opened them yet, so we're, I'm going to open them and sort them and talk about buttons and some of the things you can look for to make some really great money on eBay reselling old buttons. Okay, I have these two coffee cans. I have a small coffee can and I have a large coffee can of buttons. So I have not sorted these. We're gonna start with the small can. I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the history of buttons. And we're gonna see what we can find here. So let me spread them all out. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history while I'm, while I'm looking through. So buttons actually date back to um, the Indus Valley civilization, which was, you know, about 4,000 years ago. And that civilization was from Northeast Afghanistan uh, over into Pakistan and even northern uh, northern uh, India. So they have found in archaeological digs, they have found buttons that date back to there. I like this one. Uh, it's got, I don't know if you can see how it has some like tinsel inside. It's kind of cool. Uh, this one has a nice little, a nice little flower design. It's a hard plastic. This one possibly Bakelite. Um, so anyway, they, they have found buttons like that in archaeological archaeological digs. Here's another one of those sparkly ones. We'll see if we can't make a set here. Um, the Romans used buttons and they would fasten them in place with pins because even though buttons were a thing, buttonholes were actually not even invented to until the Middle Ages. So there's a fun fact for you. Buttons existed over 3,000 years before buttonholes existed. And so they were purely used as uh, decorative items um, in early history and they were uh, used to just, I guess, put all over the clothes to make some sorts of designs or patterns. And um, then not till the Middle Ages actually did they um, have buttonholes. So there's an interesting fact for your next trivia night. Uh, all right, so I'm picking out a few here that match. You can see I've got three here, kind of large metal buttons. Nothing particularly fancy about them, just three large metal buttons. I'm going to lay them to the side. I uh, can't read what this um, little ribbon has on it, but I'll lay those to the side. Here are a couple more that are matching. I'm going to lay to the side. Um, a lot of these buttons I'm probably going to keep for crafting purposes. I don't intend to, to sell all of them. Uh, here are a couple more large matching ones. I, I will try to put all the matching ones kind of together. Sometimes when you find a lot of buttons, you'll find them tied with a string. That makes it really handy because here we have a nice little set. Um, here we have another nice little set. Uh, a cool little brown flower design. Uh, here's another red, kind of maroon, a deep maroon set. Uh, I, I always like these sort of ball shaped ones. Those are kind of cool. Um, a lot of the, the smaller ones, the, the shiny mother of pearl ones, these are beautiful in like junk journals or crafting, um, crafting things. Uh, this is a cool one. It looks a little bit like a, a rosette or something perhaps. Um, kind of an interesting one. And there's another set. I'll lay, always lay the sets aside. Um, as you can see, it's kind of fun to sort through these. Here's another little set. I'll lay that aside. Um, this got in, into somebody's button box. <laughs> I don't think we need that. Uh, so here's a some of the, let me show you a little bit of the differences here between some of the mother of pearl ones um, and the hard plastic one. You can see uh, these are real shiny. 
and this one is matte, kind of more of a matte finish. These are probably like uh, mother of pearl. They look like it. And right here's kind of a large wooden button. A lot of times you'll find these sort of individual buttons about this size, and a lot of times those individual buttons were like the top button of a coat, uh, maybe back in like the 50s or 60s. There's that one's kind of cool. Neat little design on there. Um, looks metal, but it's but it's plastic. You can always tell by the tap test. You can tell here's a metal one. They have a nice one. Uh, buttons can be made out of a lot of different materials. They can be made out of bone. Uh, they can be made out of um, glass, stone, ceramic, metal. Here's a metal one. I was trying to see if I could see a spot a glass one. Um, I don't see. I don't know that I see a glass one right off the top here, but uh, they might be made out of bone. They could be made out of glass, ceramic, um, gold. Some buttons, you know, more expensive ones, obviously, uh, might be made out of gold. Here's a nice metal button. Looks like possibly from a military uniform. I don't know which. I have to look it up. Uh, some some military buttons are worth selling individually, or if you could get a set of four or five, uh, sometimes they're worth selling individually, kind of like this clear plastic one with the little bubble design on it. It's kind of a cool one. Um, so some buttons have sold uh, really great on eBay, and as I said, I may sell a few of these. I'll probably use most of them for crafting, unless I would just find something that was, you know, incredible. Uh, I'll probably just use them for crafting. But uh, some buttons have sold on eBay. Some of the the crafting ones, you can sell, oh, maybe five or six pounds of buttons for um, 35 to $50, something like that. Um, so that's a possibility. Some of these, some buttons uh, are made out of wood. Uh, some of them are made out of nut. I would say this one is probably made out of uh, it's pretty common to see buttons made out of the nut or the wood of the Caroso tree. I know this one's a wooden one. Um, here's a matching one for it. I'm guessing these might be made out of that. In fact, some buttons that are made out of those nuts um, or those trees actually have a DNA fingerprint. So every, every button could actually be traced back, uh, which is another interesting fact for you. Here's a little... Um, little button. It's got Asian characters on it. Kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, so yeah, we've got another one of these. I'll add that to that collection. Uh, oh, that's a pretty blue one. I like that color. It's a pretty one. Um, so these are a few, a few of the buttons. So I'm gonna sort a little bit more, and then we'll dump out the other coffee can, and we'll talk about some more buttons. Still sorting. But this is something I thought was kind of interesting, if I can get it to focus here. It's a half of a penny. I don't have the year on it. But it's a wheat penny. That someone made into a little hook of some kind. That's interesting. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Never know what you're going to find. Never know what you're going to find. So I thought I would show you a little bit of a method to my madness before I get to the next coffee can. I am just sorting by color, just trying to pull out kind of generally um, colors, put all the whites together and so forth. A lot of times if I decide to sell them, I'll sell them in, in colored lots. A lot of times people are looking for specifics. That's a real pretty blue one. Um, so I'm making a blue lot, a green lot, a red lot. Um, I've got a little, a small little purple lot, and then I'll have a clear lot and a metal lot. So I am uh, trying to kind of separate it out um, in that way by colors. So you can see the white, the blues, blue, blue, and I'm trying to put those kind of in lots of light colors. Okay, so I have these kind of sorted out. I have reds, 
and then kind of oranges and yellows and peach and lots of whites you always find lots of whites and clears and I've got some metal ones up here a few pinks pinks are pretty desirable because they're not so common and then kind of black gray and brown all together um, some greens purple again kind of desirable because they're not so common and some real pretty blues um, you'll see you can, you might find all sorts of sizes of buttons everything from teeny tiny which this one is like teeny tiny how little that is um, all the way up to like coat buttons this would be a coat button so that's a pretty decent size so you'll find a, a wide variety um, there's something just very pleasing about having them all separated into colors i think i'll put all these white ones back in the can before i dump out the next one um it took me about 10 minutes to sort these so it doesn't take a ton of time just put on some music enjoy yourself sort for a little bit while you, when you get some buttons like you can this. see nearly half oh, just a little under half of this small coffee can size these are all the the whites and clears they're going to be the most common ones those are the ones you find the most often and then the grays and browns and blacks are pretty common as well. Um, so these great for junk journaling, crafting. Um, I don't know if crafters like to have them separated out into colors or not. I know that me personally, as a crafter, I would like to have them separated into colors. So I don't know. I think it's just anybody's prerogative if you just want to like pick through and pick out the large ones and sell all the rest as a junk lot or a bulk lot that's perfectly fine anyway we're going to dump out that other one this big coffee can we're going to dump it out and take a look at what's in there all right we're going to take this big coffee can this is a big old three pound Folgers metal can i don't even know if i can empty it all out on here probably have to do it in in spells and this was from the same person this was from a colleague of mine uh, so probably we're gonna find some matching ones because I think this was uh, all from one person's collection and I can already see uh, like this pink one there's I already have some of this same pink one so I can already see that we're definitely gonna have some of the same button type so we're gonna have to do this in a couple of uh, a couple of times here because this is pretty pretty large um i did just spot some pretty yellow ones in here they're all tied together they're nice coat buttons it looks like two four six seven of them those are pretty ones but we'll start with these take a look at what we got here Oh, check that one out. That one's gorgeous. That one, as a crafter, I would say that one be, would be beautiful made into a brooch. Maybe adding some embellishments. Um, it's just plastic, so it's not super old, but cool. Very cool. Set that one aside for sure. Here's a group of grays. They're all together. We're going to put those aside. This, this is another large, large coat button and it's like feels like a metal top with a rosette and a wooden bottom and so that I'm gonna put that one aside that one's pretty cool here's another little group of sort of maroon colored maroon colored coat buttons these are brown flowers those are pretty all grouped together several of those these are some nice shiny um, plastic no, I think these could be mother of pearl. I can't quite tell. No, these are plastic. There's some plastic ones. Uh, interesting rope design on that one. Uh, I've seen this one. I saw this one in the last lot. There was one of those. This is kind of a different one. Starburst pattern. It's kind of cool. Some of these I really could see just made into brooches or made into, uh, a lot of people will take buttons and make like uh, Christmas tree designs or, you know, hot glue them to um, a background of some kind. There's a pretty pink. Look at that pretty one. Oh, that's got a stone in it of some kind. It's got some kind of a stone in the middle. 
inset inside of a plastic button. That's interesting. Uh, some buttons to keep your eyes open for. Uh, if you ever find any buttons that are Coco Chanel, uh, Chanel, vintage Chanel buttons, nine of them sold on eBay for $475. Uh, seven sold for um, $385. Three of them sold for 400 Three that were pretty unique. Here's some red. Pull out these reds and put them aside. Into the red pile. Some reds. There's a little bitty red. Um, so Coco Chanel. I've never found a Chanel button. But my goodness, I'd be happy if I found a few. Um, they, sell, they sell well. Uh, <clears throat> some co button collection. So that's a pretty green one. Some button collections have sold. Here's a, here's a mate for that one. I've got another one. Um, they've sold for several uh, hundreds, even thousands of dollars. There was a, a couple of button collections I saw on eBay recently, sold for from between um, between twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars for a collection of forty or fifty buttons. But they were kind of the holy grail buttons. They were. Very old, very unique, very desirable. It's a pretty little metal one with a, um, I don't know, little fake stone in the center of it there. Very old, um, very unique, very desirable. And some of those collections of 40 or 50 buttons have sold for $1,200, $1,300, $1,400. So it's possible to find those kind of holy grail items. Um, but you're not going to find those too terribly often. Here's an interesting design. Um, most of the time what you see being sold are like crafters lots. And crafters lots you can sell well, maybe, you know, it's a very nice mother of pearl. It's cold to the touch so you can tell that it's, it's not plastic. Um, it's a nice large one. Some of the crafters lots, if I can keep on my train of thought here, my train gets derailed pretty easily. Some of the crafters lots, though, they can get, they can sell for, I don't know, five or six pounds. You might sell five or six pounds of buttons for uh, anywhere from thirty-five to maybe fifty dollars. So they're not hugely expensive, but they're very sellable, very desirable. A lot of times you'll see them in like flea market booths. People will put a bunch of them together in a um, in a jar. A lot of times, like a vintage canning jar of some kind, and sell them for you know twenty bucks maybe for a jar of buttons. So buttons can be very, as I said, very sellable. Some are very desirable. It's worth it to look through. When you find some buttons, it's de very definitely worth your time to look through because you never know when you not, might not find something. Uh, you never know when you might find something real interesting. This one has a name on it. Uh, I can't read it. I'll have to get a, a loop to check that one out. I'm going to put that one aside and look at that one. Here's one I put aside earlier that has a name on the back that I want to look up. Sparkly, pretty one. Um, so you never know. You never know what what you will find. And I've found, you know, two or three of these. Those would be really pretty in like a junk journal or something. Uh, a lot of times these would be really pretty as in embellishments maybe on, on a fabric project. On a quilt or, or uh, some kind of a bag or purse or some kind of a fabric project. These would be make some pretty designs with buttons so crafters and artists they love buttons they'll they of course want to get a good deal on them so you can't sell them as crafters lots and get a ton of money but they are they are somewhat lucrative even as a crafters lot so anyway I'm just gonna keep sorting buttons oops here we go here's another one of those so I've got two like this those are really interesting they're plastic on the back Metal on the front. They do have a name stamped in the back that I can't make out. I'm going to have to uh, look it up. But those are very interesting buttons right there. So, 
So I'm just going to be here sorting buttons for a long time. I'm still sorting here, but I found these buttons. These are kind of interesting. They only have two holes. Um, they feel like, look like they're made of bone. Um, so these could quite possibly be from the 1800s. These could be um, what they called underwear buttons um, that they would use on undergarments. Uh, anyway, I've found five so far. Um, may find some more, but these could be an interesting find. Not particularly expensive, but a lot of five or six might sell for like 10 or $15 if you wanted to list it on, uh, on eBay. So just an interesting finding. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like the content that I put out. I do want my videos to be educational and I hope that you enjoy it. So please consider liking and subscribing and come back for the next video. Bye-bye now.